do you think, when I was growing up, my favorite holiday of the year, what do you think it was? Yep. <laughs> Christmas. These are pictures, I don't know if you can see them very good, but the middle is my family at Christmas. The one on the, your left is me with all my Christmas presents. Right? <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I'd have, when I was real little, my sister, I just have one sister, would wake me up, Jerry, it's Christmas. And I'd go, oh, great. I says, go count how many presents I got. So she'd run out. She's younger than me. She'd go run out. She goes, you got 10 presents. I go, okay, good. I'll be up in a second. Go put them in a pile for me. <laughs> so my sister would run out, pile up on my presents. So still now, I said, Casey Taylor, put all my presents in a pile. So that's what, this is me with all my presents and my dogs. And then on the right are some of my Christmas presents. It's my new um, Disneyland Christmas tree. See that in the back? And it's my new uh, BB-8 robot as my new um, Star Wars character that my daughter got me. But Christmas has always been really big. And in Joel Dorsinchi, we don't even talk about Christmas, but that's a whole another <laughs> Dharma talk. I still love Christmas. And to be honest, Christmas is still my number one holiday. But the idea of Honko being the number one service. I just had to put this meme in. My, my daughter made it for me. It's me with my mind blown. Right? So Honko being the number one holiday of the year to me kind of blows my mind. Do you know why? I can't think of anything really right off the bat. Like today we chanted, or we did the Nembutsu Wasan. Traditionally on Honko, we do the Shoshinge Gyo. And it's nothing to really celebrate when you chant that. I remember when I used to, because we still do it in Salt Lake, I've had family members who come out in Honko and they go, oh, I forgot. It's the day we sit, chant that really long, long sutra. But the Shoshinge does express everything that we are as Jolo Shinshi Buddha. The other thing of Honko that I always thought about, but Reverend Wonder says you don't have the candles yet, used to be red candles were always on the altar at Honko. Have any idea why red? Honko is Shinnan Shoni's memorial service, right? It's kind of, a, you think, a somber occasion. Red in Japanese actually means celebration. And so I used to, why do we have red candles at a memorial service when red is to celebrate? And so I asked Reverend Izui, who is the head of rituals for Honganji, came here last year. I said, why do we have red candles? And he said, for our tradition, the first 50 years of memorial have that sense of sadness. And when we have a memorial service for 50 years, usually many of the people had a personal connection to those people. But he goes, after 50 years, very few people are even alive who know the people at that service. How many of you have been to very many 50 years? I've only done a few 50-year memorial services. And I haven't done a hundred, but they do have hundred year memorial service. But what Reverend Easy says, 50 years and beyond, if the families still get together, because that's a reason to celebrate that this person's life had such meaning that it continues to draw people in to listen to the Dharma. So it becomes a time of celebration. Time of gratitude. That's why honko literally means to return in gratitude. That's hon. And the ko means to clarify the meaning of what it is to be grateful. All right? But still, that didn't really mean a lot to me. So 
A few years ago, I wrote a story. It was actually, I made this story for OCBC, when I came to OCBC. It was called Horace the Honko Hippo. Right. If you ever want to read that story, it's, it's in the book that you actually, OCBC, published for me, called Teriyaki Priest. But this story is about a hippo who felt very unwanted. He didn't feel like people respected him, right? Because he, he was jealous of the rhinoceros. He was jealous of the whale. Because he says, I'm just as big and strong as any rhinoceros. And if you, you look it up, actually the hippo is faster and as strong as any rhino. But people only respect the rhino. And he says, no one respects me. And so this hippo, in his self-pitying, one day happened to meet Santa Claus. Right? Santa Claus was on a training run around the world with his reindeer and just happened to plop down by a river that Horace was at to water the reindeer, and there was Horace. So he had this long conversation with Santa, and Santa explained to him, Horace, you're wonderful as you are. He goes, you might not feel it, but you're embraced by great love and compassion just as you are. And for Horace, that was such a huge thing. He, so he started screaming and shouting, Namu Amidabutsu, Namu Amidabutsu. And this Namu Amidabutsu to me reminds me of the first two lines of Shoshinge. And I think it's the first step of understanding Jodo Shinshu. Right? It's Kimyo Muryo Junyorai. I take refuge in the Tathagata of immeasurable life. Namo Fukashi Ko, which means I entrust myself to the Buddha of inconceivable life. These are the essence of Namo Amidabutsu. So in this story, he just runs around and then he starts to fly. So I was telling people about how Horace gives presents to people, children, on the eve of Honko, which is January 15th. And they give children presents that they didn't get but should have received. But anyway, I told this story once. This is a side note. I don't want to get off and become one of these long speaking ministers, but I have an assistant. I don't know if she's been here today. Reverend Ann Spencer. And she told me that she had a visitor come to the Idaho Gorm Buddhist Temple and said, you know, I was at the Salt Lake Buddhist Temple. And they had a hippopotamus on their altar. And the minister talked all about this hippopotamus. And he goes, what does a hippopotamus have to do with Jodo Shinshu? So she had to tell him that, oh, that our minister just made up this story about Honko the hippo. She says, you should hear our other minister talk about his frog, Freddy. <laughs> anyway, I don't do frogs. Some said, Someone asked me, well, you should make him a puppet. And I said, you know, I have too much ego to do that. I said, <laughs> I said, I just can't get myself to talk to my hand like this, no matter what I do. So I have a stuffed animal named Horace the Hippo. But this song, Honko no Uta, I think expresses another reason, besides those first two word lines of Shoshinge of well, I believe is the importance of Honko. This idea of Shindan coming back to us. And if you say Namu Amidabutsu, if you understand what it is to take refuge in Namu Amidabutsu with a heart of humility, 
and you do that with others. He said, understand that you're not alone. The I, Shindan, will be there. To me, this teaches us this interconnection of all of us, that we're never alone, that we're tied together in what it is to be Namami Dabutsu. And this is what brings about this idea of gratitude. There's a quote. This isn't a Jodo Shinshu teacher, but his name is Daisaku Ikeda. But he had this quote that I think epitomizes this idea of Buddhism and especially Jodo Shinshu. He wrote, none of us can exist in isolation. Our lives and existence are supported by others in seen and unseen ways, be it by parents, mentors, or society at large. To be aware of these connections, to feel appreciation for them, and to strive to give something back to society in a spirit of gratitude is the proper way for a human being to live. I think this is Honko. This is our temple. This is Jodo Shinshu. It's to understand that we do not live alone. So for me, there's three aspects. The number one is to take refuge in the mystery of life, to understand that the universe is much more than me, and to begin to understand that I have to take refuge in this wonder and something more than I am. The other is it's to praise our connections to one another, our families, our sons, daughters, wives, husbands, grandfathers, grandmothers. And last is to praise our teachers and friends. These three things are what Honko means to me. So I realize that these three things are also the three things that I talked about. First is this awe and mystery of taking refuge. This picture is, one part is in uh, my district, Mountain States District, we hold our family conference in southern Utah. And we hold, this, we hold the services in these national parks. And this one is, we usually have one at Balanced Rock. If you've never been to Moab, it's one of the national parks. We have a service there, and this is us holding our service. Next to it shows the odd mystery of Disneyland. Right? It makes an old guy like me wear these funny little hats. The other one is to celebrate with our families. This is the picture of that service. At Southern Utah, Reverend Harada has been there. Bishop Mez has been there. It's, it's quite interesting to go to these national parks, these places of great awe, and to chant with the rest of our sangha. And the third is to thank our teachers, friends, and leaders. So the three reasons that I had for loving coming to Orange County are the same things that Honko represents. Taking refuge, being with our families and friends, having our teachers and leaders to support and encourage us. So Honko is a time for all. So that's why for us as Jodo Shinshu Buddhists, it's considered one of the, if not the most important holiday of the year. But I still put probably Christmas at number one. So Honko is a way for us to do this. So in closing, I would like to read this passage that expresses Shindan's joy. And this is from his Kyogyo Shinsho. If you could join me in Gashou, please. How joyous I am, Gutoku Shindan, disciple of Shakyamuni. Rare is it to come upon the t sacred scriptures from the westward land of India and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan. But now I have been able to encounter them. Rare is it to hear them, but already I have been able to hear. Reverently entrusting myself to the teaching, practice, and realization that are the true essence of the Pure Land Way, I am especially aware 
of the profundity of the Tathagata's benevolence. Here I rejoice in what I have heard and extol what I have attained. Namo Amidava. Namo Amidava. Thank you, everyone. I hope that if you have a chance, you will visit me at one of the temples that I met. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to share this home call with you.